Hey everybody, welcome back to the second video of the Nux Performance In-Depth series on my channel. And today we talk all about lazy. Lazy developers are a good thing, we always hear that. But how about lazy components and how we can use that and what is it actually? Let's check it out now. So lazy or better lazy loading is a very key term in the web performance optimization part, right? Lazy loading images, lazy loading iframes, lazy loading everything, also components. And that's possible with Nuxt in view very, very easily. So we'll jump into a little demo application a bit that I created showing you what the lazy actually is, what Nuxt is doing under the hood with it and the view fundamentals from it. And then we see what problems it solves and what you better shouldn't do and why. Our demo application is pretty minimal as usual. This time we add a Tailwind CSS because why not? We have an app that view here that's loading several components like the header, the sidebar and the footer. And we have an index page that shows a bunch of things, has an is open ref and a modal down here, right? And a button that on click opens it. And when the modal closes, it will be set to false again, the is open ref over here. Okay, so far so good. But what, what did I mean with lazy? Well, if we, for example, want to import that app footer, we can write app footer here. And we have that lazy option here, even though we don't have anything with lazy in, in the components there. So even when we type lazy here, we see that all the components, even the ones provided by Nux or some modules, they all have a lazy option too. So what is that? And what does Nux do under the hood? Let's have a look straight away in the Nux code and figure out what is happening there. For this, we take a look at the transform.ts in Nux packages, Nux source components in the official Nux repository. As usual, link is in the description. And in here, it's a little transform plugin that will actually add our components from, for the auto imports. And here we see, okay, uh, this is added as the Pascal case name. So we saw, for example, app footer, right? And some mode is added, for example, if you have a .client component or the server component. And also below here, the second version of it is added as a lazy and then the Pascal case name. Cool. And also an async mode is introduced here because that, that's very important. We see that below on line 63 that in the actual transform, what's happening is if the mode is async, then the code will look the following. Here, define async component from view is used and then we export that define async component function referencing a dynamic import of our components. So basically it says, okay, just dynamically import the app footer, name it lazy app footer, and, but wrap that with define async component. And that's a very nice feature of view actually that allows you to, well, define components that might not load synchronously, but asynchronously. For example, for dynamic import or with like fetching with some promise. And the good part is, this even allows you to do code splitting straight away and don't load everything at once. This is not to confuse with what the view router is doing, also Nuxt under the hood with code splitting by route. There you don't need it. This is really only for components. Now we know what's Nuxt doing under the hood. Next, let's jump back into the demo application and see the problem that we have right now with our model and how to fix it with the lazy prefix and define async component. If we load our application here, then we'll see, okay, there is not that much going on. We have like a sidebar and here header, all fine. And what do we see here? Well, we see the index.js loading and an entry file. And why is that? Well, because that's index.js, that is part of the current page we are. If we'd have an about or like posts or jokes, that would also be there, uh, separate JS files, right? The interesting part is if we click the button here, we see a modal saying, yeah, that doesn't matter. Let's not do that now. Maybe you should, let's see. But we don't load any other components here, right? So where does that modal content come from? And the answer is it's in that index part here. So if you open that in a new tab and make it a little bit bigger and search for subscribe here, we see, oh yeah, are you sure that you want to subscribe, la la la. And we even have the modal, what it emits and so on, so on. So that modal is baked into that index.js. And that's because we only use it here in that index.js page and we don't lazy load it, right? So it will be loaded even though it's only shown when the VF is triggered, which means our initial page size is a bit bigger than it has to be, right? And it might take longer for the user to load. So how do we fix that? Well, 
as mentioned before, we can use the lazy prefix and it's not that complicated. When we jump into the index page of our application, then we have that app model down here. And the only thing we need to do is we have to append lazy. And that's it. Now the component will only be loaded when it's actually needed. So when that V if is triggered. Let's confirm that after rebuilding the application because we're not running the dev server here, but the production build, and then have a look in the browser again. If we reload our application now, we see that the index and the entry.js file is still there. But now if we click on that button, we see, okay, the model is popping up and there's a modal file loading. That's not part of the index.js anymore, but now it's actually a fully separate component as mentioned before. The only downside of this is, well, the JavaScript needs to be loaded after clicking, so there might be a little delay until the user sees the component. And you can also circumvent that by prefetching the component when the browser is idle, which is what Nux is doing with page files, by the way, by default. So if we would have another about that view here, that would be prefetched when all the resources for the current page are fetched and when the link is in the viewport. So if there would be some kind of Nux link here. But that's once again part for another video. Now let's overdo it. Let's just jump back in the code and say, why can't we just lazy load everything, right? So if we go to the app.view and just put a lazy in front of everything here, like lazy app header, lazy app sidebar, lazy app footer, we can do that, but we shouldn't. Let's see why after rebuilding the application and checking the result in the browser. So if we reload the page here, we see, oh no, it's not only the index and the entry file, it's also a file for the header, the footer and the sidebar. Because the initial request here is service that rendered, that's not that big of a problem. But when it comes to interactivity, that's a big deal. And especially when navigating from page to page, it's also a big bummer. And when you have a bigger app, just imagine that all the parent components will lazy load all their child components. And when they are loaded, they will then load lazily, once again, their grandchildren and so on and so on. So that will cause horrible performance problems if you would lazy load everything. So please don't lazy load anything above the fold. I think the footer, for example, would be more than fine, but the sidebar, the header, and for example, some content here, you don't want to lazy load because you cause additional HTTP round trips, the content cannot be prefetched automatically by Nuxt, and it can still cause some delays because, well, the file has to be loaded and parsed and it's not part of, for example, the index or about or post JavaScript file already. So what's the TLDR? Well, the TLDR is the lazy prefix is very nice to create async components on the fly and Nuxt provides that out of the box. It is great to lazy load stuff, but please don't overdo it especially if you have something above the fold or part of the app shell, like header or sidebar that people should see straight away, don't lazy load it. For sidebar, if it's for example, only mobile, you can, you can at least consider it if you want to. Same for a footer. And everything behind a VIF, for example, a modal, is also a good lazy loading candidate. The bigger issue is that you have a trade-off with reactivity straight away. So let's say you don't lazy load it and the modal component is there, but it's part of your initial bundle. so initial page size, size is bigger, but um, the reactivity and the interactivity is straight there. Or just say, you know what, it's fine if the user waits 20 milliseconds longer until the JavaScript arrives. And of course, with a few performance tricks here and there, you can even improve that further, but that's a bit too far for today. Any questions left? As usual, please drop them down below in the comments. And guys, I was so happy about the first episode's feedback. It's amazing. I noted down all the ideas and suggestions you had. So. As usual, keep them coming. We'll go through them step by step, but it takes a little bit. For now, the only thing left to say is thanks a lot for watching. Take a look at all the other videos on the channel and happy hacking. See you soon.